I'm sorry I look like every cop that's been in trouble on the news. <laughs> you know, during the height of the pandemic, my friend calls me up. He goes, Mike, do you want to go to Spain this year for running with the bulls? I go, isn't that a bit soon? Remember last week when the air almost killed us? <laughs> Remember five days ago, we were almost murdered by the air? And now you want to go running with the bulls. Which I know that's what it's called, but that's not actually what you're going to be doing. <laughs> running with the bulls implies that the bulls have accepted you. <laughs> and you guys have decided to exercise together. <laughs> what you're going to be doing is running from the bulls. <laughs> Do you understand the difference? Running with, running from. Everybody's so focused on pronouns now. Maybe we should take a look at some of these prepositions. <laughs> running with, running from. He's kind of an unhealthy guy, so I took a shot at him. I go, instead of running with the bulls, why don't you just try running? Because you know what can kill you besides bulls? A sedentary lifestyle. He goes, well, let me know. You know, we all have to get COVID tests before we go over. I go, oh, do they want us completely healthy for when we're murdered by bulls? <laughs> my girlfriend moved in with me during the pandemic, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself first. I'm 100% Italian. Thank you. <laughs> and I tell people that, and I get pushback. They go, 100% your mother and father? I go, that's what 100% means. <laughs> what did you drop out of the fifth grade? <laughs> they go, can you speak it? I go, no, I'm third generation. They go, oh, you're not real. <laughs> but I tried, I took an Italian language class at my high school, but I was failing it. So I did the most Italian thing I could think of. I went to the teacher after class and I said, look, I'm getting an F, I'm failing your class. But what do you say you give me a B? <laughs> and nothing will happen to you or your family. <laughs> There's nothing more Italian than that. <laughs> now, my girl is from rural Indiana, and uh, I learned this very early on during the quarantine. People from rural Indiana do not like to be called hillbillies. <laughs> Did you guys know that? <laughs> That's considered a slur. The correct term is caged free. The caged free do not like to be called hill folk. It gets their overalls in a twist. <laughs> the hardest thing about moving in with someone is getting adjusted to each other's bad habits. I'll go first with mine. My bad habit is yelling. I do yelling. And I thought, oh, this is just being Italian-American, but that's not what it's called now. That's not what it's called in 2022. It's not called being Italian-American. Now it's called toxic <laughs> and problematic. <laughs> it's no longer ethnic. It's now toxic and problematic. Her problem, and since she's not here, we'll get into it, she leaves her crap all over the place. I mean, real bad. Cupboards open, drawers open, clothes all over the floor. So I go, were you raised in a barn? That's a pretty standard thing to say to somebody who's being a slob, were you raised in a barn? But she's from rural Indiana. So it turns out she actually was raised in a barn. She took it personal and it started a four day fight but it was a cultural miscommunication and she did it back to me. During the fight, she called me a pig and that's a slap in the face in my culture. But to somebody from rural Indiana, a pig is your friend. <laughs> she just meant that you are very loyal and trustworthy. <laughs> but I remember the first time our bad habits collided. You know, I walk in the apartment and it's a mess and I go, what is this? What is this? And she comes out of the room and looks at me and goes, please stop yelling. I go, oh, I wasn't yelling at you. I was yelling at the person that I thought kidnapped you. Cause this looks like a crime scene. What are you trying to tell me with this? You're from the Midwest, are you pro tornado? Because I'm anti tornado. 
I think they destroy lives. But it's not that, it's just that Indiana is a different place than New York. It's not better or worse, it's just different. I went to go visit her people, very nice. I ducked away for a little alone time, I went to the diner. I had a great meal and I got the bill and the bill was for $6. So I call the waitress over, I go, excuse me, miss, there must be some mistake. This says $6. She goes, there's no mistake, and you're gonna pay every penny of it. I go, I don't think you understand. What I'm saying is, I have enough money in my pocket right now to buy this restaurant. So living together is going pretty good for me, guys, but uh, I made a mistake uh, during the quarantine and uh, don't ever do this with your significant partner. We're laying in bed and I go, let's get to know each other a little bit better. On the count of three, let's blurt out our IQs. <laughs> Never do that with your significant partner. One of you is dumber. <laughs> and in my case, it was me and I was much dumber. And she loves me, so she was trying to save it. She goes, Mike, you have a much lower IQ than I do. Even you're smart enough to know that. <laughs> she goes, but you have this other thing called emotional intelligence, and that's pretty valuable too. <laughs> and I did some research, and it turns out emotional intelligence is completely made up. <laughs> it's fake. It's just something that smart people tell dumb people that they have so that the dumb people don't kill themselves. And they stay alive, and they do the jobs that the smarter people don't want to do. So my jobs in the apartment are as follows. Sanitation and extermination. Bugs and trash. That's what I do, I do bugs and trash. And sometimes she'll quiz me. She'll go, what are your jobs? I'll go, bugs and trash. And she'll be like, who's my guy? I go, I am. Nail it. Nail it every time. We recently had an incident. There was a bug in the bathroom. And the reason I know, because she was in the bathroom and she yells, a bug, a bug, it's a bug, there's a bug. I'm like, all right, car alarm, I got it. I go in, flick the light on, bug freezes, I freeze, it's a standoff. Now I try to kill this bug three times. Third time I step directly on him, scoop him up with toilet paper. He's still alive but wounded. So I throw him in the toilet. I flush the toilet. It's swirling around. This bug pushes away from the toilet paper. He Heismans the toilet paper, swims to the side of the bowl, starts climbing out. I see that, I back out of the bathroom. I go, it's all good, babe. She goes in the bathroom, she comes back out. She goes, he's alive and better than ever. I go, let me tell you something about this bug. He has more of a will to live than you and me combined. She goes, well, go back in there and kill him. I go, relax, this isn't a mafia family, okay? This bug has a lot of the characteristics, actually, that I admire in any living thing. This bug is resilient, overcomes adversity, mentally tough, never quits. This bug is basically who I wanna be as a person. I'm not gonna go back in there and kill my role model. He just lives with us now. She goes, well, I'm afraid to go in the bathroom. I go, well, you should be. Cause you ordered his death three times. And I'm sure he overheard you. Cause this bug probably doesn't have the highest IQ, but I'm sure he's got a lot of emotional intelligence. <laughs> 